Hello, this is Brock Lemires. Uh, we're continuing our study of embedded systems design by looking at data movement instructions and specifically addressing modes. So we are on to the sixth addressing mode supported by the MSP430, and it is called indirect auto increment mode. <clears throat> what this is, is an extension of indirect register mode, where we put an address into a register and then we use that as a pointer to another location. And the reason that that is a great <clears throat> feature is because if you need to move through a block of memory address by address, the only way to ever automatically increment an, an, ad, or a, an address value is using a register. And so if we can bring the, the address into a register, then we can use instructions like increment or increment double <clears throat> but it's such a common thing that is done when you access memory blocks. It, the MSP430 actually gives you a built-in addressing mode that will automatically increment the register after you access the information in memory. So, indirect auto increment mode. Okay, so once again, we put, we put the address into the register and then what will happen is it will be automatically incremented. The increment type is going to be interesting because re recall that every byte in memory in the MSP430 has an address. However, 16-bit word access is aligned to even addresses. So, for example, if you are going to put something in data memory it, and you put a 16-bit word, it'll go at 2,000. If you put another 16-bit word, it'll go at 2002. You put another 16-bit word, it'll go at 2004. If you then, if you instead put a byte at 2000, the next byte would go at 2001, <clears throat> okay? So you can certainly do byte operations with indirect auto increment mode, but you're gonna do it using the dot W and the dot B, <clears throat> and that might be useful at, in some applications. This indirect auto increment is available for use as the source only, which makes sense because it's it's just an extension of indirect register mode. And in fact, the symbol is actually the same. You use at, and then you give a register, and that serves as the register pointer. And then what happens is that you put a plus after it, and that means that it's going to automatically increment it. Okay, so I'm going to read the behavior. The register name holds the address of where information is to be accessed, i.e. a pointer. After access, the register is incremented. Okay, all right, so let's let's do an example and see how this works. I want to go out into memory, and I'm going to put a block. I'm going to define it, a big block of memory. So I'm going to put in here, uh, let's go to data memory, 2000, and let's put like 11223344556677889988, AA, and we'll just pump all those in there. And we'll look at the directive to actually do that. And then what I want to do is I'm going to use R4 as my indirect register, and what I'll do is I'll load 2000 into R4, and then I will just go through and I will grab this value right here at 2000 using indirect auto increment mode. And when I grab it and put it into a CPU register, it will automatically increment down to 2002. Then I'll grab this value, 3344, and bring it into another CPU register, and then it'll automatically increment down here by two. Grab this value, let it automatically increment. Grab this value, let it automatically increment. Grab this value, let it automatically increment. And what we'll do is we'll, let's do a couple where we do 16-bit operations and also 8-bit operations just to, to see how it actually works. Okay, so fire up Code Composer Studio and plug in your Launchpad board. We are going to create a new CCS project. And I'm going to call this ASM underscore adder address mode six, meaning that we're now looking at the sixth supported address mode in the MSP 430. And I'll call it indirect underscore auto increment. CPU is correct. I'm uh, going to go right here with empty only, empty assembly only. And here I am. I've got my main.asm, I've got all the startup code that handles some stuff for me, and I'm ready to do some stuff. So let's start as always by getting our main loop set up. So we'll do um, put a main address label and then we'll do a jump main, and our example code will go in here. 
but we want to set up a block in memory. So let's get our picture up here of what we're actually trying to do. So I want, I want to set this up right here. Okay, so I'm going to set up, I want to download this information to memory. Okay, so I'm going to grab this comment header block and I'll put it down below main and I'm going to always label it data, not even close, uh, memory allocation. All right, and now I'm going to come down here and I need to use a directive to say, hey, go into data memory. So I put data there and my comment would be go to data memory at 2000H, which I just know because I looked at the data sheet, uh, dot retain. And that means leave alone optimizer. <laughs> so it'll leave those even though we're, our program doesn't do anything. And now we're going to create a block of memory. I can do this on one line. So I'm going to say, I'm gonna, let's call it block. And we'll call it one. Uh, I use dot short, which, which means it's going to allocate, not allocate, it's going to initialize a 16-bit word in memory. And I'm going to start off with 1122H. So that does the first one. But I can actually comma delimit a, a series of numbers, and it will just incrementally put them into memory. So if I wanted to do this, I could just go comma space 3344 hex, and then that put 3344 immediately in data memory after the first value that I gave. And if I want to then do the third word, I do 5566 hex, and then I do 7788 hex, and then I do 998 hex, and I have just created a block of data. Okay, so I can go create block of constants. Okay, now it's in data memory, so they're, they're not truly constants. You could overwrite it, but anyway, so that's going to be downloaded to data, or downloaded to data memory. And now let's go up here and let's do some instructions using this auto increment mode. So I'm going to do the first thing. Remember, it's ex just like indirect register mode. You are going to put an address in a register in the CPU that will serve as the address pointer. So I'm going to go like this. I'm going to say move.w and I use immediate addressing and I put block one. And that's going to go, well, let's just use R4, okay? So let's do this. Let's uh, set up initial address pointer. This value is going to be 2,000. And I know that because it's the first set of constants that I set up in data memory. And I know since data memory starts at 2,000, these will all be dumped into there when I download to the MCU. Okay. All right. So I got my address pointer. And now let's do this. Let's grab... Let's do three of these as 16-bit word uh, moves. And so check this out. I'm going to do, I kind of want to still see, yeah, I want to see my memory allocation. So consider this command, M-O-V-W, and I'm going to do at R4 plus R5. Okay, what this is going to do is it's just like indirect register. It's going to use the address that's in R4 as an address pointer. So that at tells it, don't go, it's going to say, use this R4 value, which we know holds 2000 at this point, and go get that. And then after you get it, go ahead and increment it. It's going to actually increment it by two because I did the dot W. So since everything is, is uh, aligned to even addresses, like we talked about, a dot W will cause R4 to be incremented by two. Now, the reason that that was really important was because check this out. What if I then did the exact same thing? So well, not, not exact, but I used that same indirect register and I did this. What would happen is that R4 has been incremented by two. That means it's now pointing at the next location in memory where a 16 bit word would be. And I can move that into a CPU register. So I'm going to move 3344 into R6. Now consider this. After that's done, the plus will increment it again by 2. And I'll do move.w. And let's go at R4 plus, And let's put this into R7. OK, so now there's our instructions. Let's go ahead and fire this up and watch it work. So now I'm going to come along. And I download it. And I got my registers here. 
Uh, let's go out to, uh, in memory browser, let's go to 2000 hex, which is the start of data memory. And lo and behold, look at this. I have, let's see, let me resize this here. You have 1122-3344-5566-7788-9988. So I did it. That was downloaded because I put this directive in there. Okay, it was this directive down here, uh, the dot short in this list. That's what got it into memory. Now what I want to see is can I access that and bring it in using this auto increment uh, mode, this uh, indirect auto increment. Okay, so I'm going to put a breakpoint right there on the first, in actually, no, let's do it right here. Let's do it at the first instruction, and let's go ahead and run to that breakpoint. I'm ready to go, so now I'm going to watch what goes into R4. So I'm going to go ahead and say step, and 2000 went in there. It, it already was 2000 from our last program, but 2000 was loaded in there. Now I'm going to load something into R5. It is going to be using this mode right here. It is going to go out to address 2000 using R4 as the address pointer and grab this value 1122 and stuff it into R5. So let's step it and see if it happens. Boom, it did it. Not only did it do it, look at what happened to R4. R4 was incremented by 2 after that move instruction. That's what that little plus sign did. It automatically incremented it. And since we did dot W, it incremented by two so that it is now pointing to, ta-da, the next location in memory which holds a 16-bit word. That happens to be 2002. Now let's see what happens if I step this. Boom. It took 3344 and it put it into R6. And not only did it do that, it incremented R4 by two. So it's pointing at the next address location in, in memory that's holding information for us. And now we'll do another step, and guess what? 5566 went into R7, and lo and behold, R4 went to 2006. So you can see that you could put all these instructions, you could access a large array of information. You can see what's happening here is this by itself is awesome, let's just be honest. <laughs> but you, we're, we're using it in a dumb way because we're putting the same instructions down. We wouldn't copy and paste if we needed to, ac to access like a K worth of memory. We wouldn't put a thousand uh, instructions, but we would put this inside of a looping structure that could go through memory blocks uh, word by word and access any arbitrarily large block of memory. So we're not at loops yet, so we don't know how to do that yet. So this is just to get us familiar with the addressing mode. Okay, let's go ahead and stop and we'll terminate our, our debug session. And now let's take a look at some 8-bit ones. So let's go move.b, and then we'll do the same thing. At r4, r4 plus, what? So r4 plus, and we'll put it in r, r8, and then we'll go move.b at r4 plus, put that in r9, and then we'll go move.b, and then we'll go at r4 plus and we'll put that in r10 okay so let's save that up and we'll go ahead and start a debug session all right it's ready to roll and let's go ahead let's go ahead and run to that same breakpoint and we'll watch the whole thing work now so i got my whole let me get my whole program on the screen there and i run to the breakpoint and now i'm going to step over and let's do that initializes r4 okay to 2000 and then i'm going to go ahead and step I moved the first 16-bit word into R5, the second 16-bit word into R6, the third 16-bit word into R7. Now I'm gonna do an 8-bit into R8. So what is gonna happen? This is, this is interesting. We're looking at 2006, okay? So this is address 2006. The question is, is it gonna grab 88 or 77? Okay, we covered this before, but let's just take a look at what happens. I'm gonna go ahead and step, and it got 8.8, eight because that's the low byte. So the low byte is in the even address, and the high byte is in the, the high address. When you do 16-bit operation, 16-bit access, you don't need to worry about it. It automatically handles like straightening all this out, but when you do 8-bit operations, you gotta go back and look at the memory map for how 8-bit uh, access works, and it turns out that the low byte is actually at 2006, the high byte is at 2007, okay? Same thing, let's look at what happens with R9. Look at it, it went and now it got seven. 
it went and got seven. And look at R4 was incremented by one to 2007. Now it's at 2008. Let's go, let's do this one more time. It's gonna do, AA goes into R10, and then look at R4 was incremented by one. So the big takeaway here, move.b is gonna increment automatically by one, and that's okay as long as you make sure you know where you're at and you know which bite you're getting, whether it's the low bite or the high bite, okay? Okay, and that is it. I mean, that is, it's a very powerful tool. The way we're using it right now, this addressing mode seems stupid because we're having to put individual instructions, but imagine this in a loop. This is how you can just crank through huge blocks of data. Okay, let me kill off my deal there, and that is it. The syntax at with the plus after it, it's basically indirect register mode, but with an auto increment at the end. And we went through a nice little example, and guess what? That's it. Good job. Uh, remember to subscribe to my channel. Subscribe to my channel, and I'll talk to you later.